It's an important day to start the show with a very relevant but uncomfortable fact, unpopular fact, very often denied fact, especially right now, but one that is so important to understanding the role of militarism in society. And that fact is that not a single veteran alive today deserves thanks for serving their country. They were serving bankers, politicians, and war profiteers. Now, there are a lot of typical objections by statists, people who worship government, militarists, people who worship the military, when they hear a statement like this. And even for myself, there has been a bit of a process in coming to accept this fact, having put my life on the line in uniform myself, having volunteered to do a deployment in a combat zone, having earned my combat action ribbon with the U.S. Marines. But there's something inherently contradictory in the statements that deny this. When you say, thank you for your service to a veteran, you're saying they're serving the country. Thank you for serving your country. And that's an inherent denial about the reality of who we're serving by serving the military. And some people who cling to this will say, but it, yeah, yeah, politicians and bankers and, and war profiteers screwed up, but yet people who serve are serving for the right reasons. And it doesn't matter because it is so dangerously and recklessly naive such that I can say with confidence that joining the military today in the United States can only be an act of cowardice, ignorance, or greed. Either you're, you're afraid to take charge of your own life and set your own cor course and you need a military career plotted out for you. Maybe it's greed. You join for the benefits, get your teeth fixed, have smoke blown up your ass, free drinks at the bar. Yeah. But ignorance is really the big one. And there are some people who are, like myself, genuinely well-intentioned to join the military, that we wanted to serve, that we fell for the lie. But it's easy. Well, we thank them for their good intent. Well, if if... I'm a doctor and, and I say, look, I got this. I'm going to operate on, on your, you've, you've got your, you're bleeding out. I'm, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to operate and, and everything's going to be okay. Don't worry. I got this, but I've never been to medical school. I have no idea what's going on. I'm just naive and delusional, but it's okay. I guess I want to help. And I go in and uh, as a result of my uh, botched operation on you, you're now crippled. You don't say, well, thanks for trying. Thanks, Doc. Hey, we really appreciate that. That your intent was good, but th thank you for thank you for cutting off the wrong leg. Thank you for crippling and maiming me for the rest of my life. Thank you for because you you tried. That's almost worse. It's worse to say thank you for your service or to your 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 naive intention behind your service. It's, it's almost paternalistic and yet excusing and venerating of that ignorance at the same time. So who are we serving as, as serving bankers, politicians, and war profiteers? If you understand the nature of war, you understand that the people who set the policy, the people who benefit from it, don't send their own kids to war. No, they are war criminals. As Smedley Butler described it in his book, War is a Rack, and this is Smedley Butler. Yeah. Two-time Medal of Honor winner, most decorated Marine in military history, blah, 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 blah. Wrote a book when he got out of the military, War is a Racket, in which he describes himself as a high-class muscle man for big business who made Central America safe for United Fruit Company. 
By the way, in Marine Corps boot camp, they teach us about Smelly Butler. In the Green Bible, in your little green monster book that you get, you learn the history of the Marine Corps and how amazing Major General Smedley Butler was. They don't tell you about the book that he wrote, calling the whole thing a scam when he got out of the military. So there are people who still try to validate this and say that you've been lied to and coerced. But not everybody fell for the lie. People who joined the military in this day and age, as I was, are still responsible for our reckless, naive negligence. And we can't say, well, everybody did. It was involuntary. They lied to you and you didn't have a chance. You, ch you never had a chance to fact check the government. You never had a chance to study history. You never had a chance to think independently. You just saw the TV commercial with the Marine Corps officer slaying the lava monster with the sword and said, sign me up for that. Thanks, but no thanks. So right now, uh, I, I'm getting objections to sharing these ideas on social media. And, and, and even one veteran or one active duty service member, excuse me, on Twitter said, I'd like to think of it that I'm serving the guys to my left and right. Most guys joined thinking they'd be doing good. If I can do my part in keeping them safe, then my time and the service is well spent in my book. Well, then your book is fucked up. First of all, I'd like to think, in this case, Eagles, I'm more comfortable with my delusion than the truth. And as he said, I'm, I'm stuck in... Uh... By the way, also, I should point out, when... It you say that I'm in the military or I'm, I served overseas or when I was there, I was just serving to protect my fellow service members. That doesn't make it okay to commit a war crime. Well, I was protecting them while they were committing war crimes. I was just the excess. No, no. So on Twitter, this, this gentleman responded, I'm stuck in this job whether I like it or not. I signed a contract back before I understood how worthless, worthless it all is. I can sit and wallow in that fact or try to make something good of it. I understand I don't deserve to be thanked for it. I just want to do whatever I can. Well, making something good of it is not the same as making excuses for it. No shit, right? But I, I had to respond, that's another lie. Does the military pay you to lie? I mean, is it Maybe they don't pay, they pay this guy directly, obviously. But uh, do you think I'm stupid? You know, I was in the Marines, right? I know I know how this works. And since it was Twitter, I called him a fuck-faced liar. And because he, he's a veteran. Take it. Actually, the response was great because I said, you can get out at any time as a conscientious objector if you have a conscience. And I put the link to giwrightshotline.org. And I will promote that every day I get the chance. giwrightshotline.org. No one in the military has to stay in the military. By the way, it's not a contract. I mean, there's so many lies and delusions baked into this. They tell you, you sign the contract. USMC, you sign the motherfucking contract, right? No. Uh, you suckers miss Christmas. You suck my cock. Uh, blind justice, we made the choice to terrorize communities, to pull the trigger and murder strangers, to destroy house after house, searching for ghosts. Indeed, thank you, Blind Justice. Another global war on terror combat veteran who has come to acknowledge this difficult truth. So the response from this active duty service member on Twitter was, no one ever told me about it, bro. Lol, relax. I'll look into it. And sometimes that's all it takes. And it's often maddening. For us as people who want peace, who want justice, who want to see humanity evolve past militarism, to escape these cycles of violence and trauma that repeat generation after generation. And when we see this delusion resulting in pain and death and suffering, it's tough not to get angry. And I am angry. I'm fucking pissed. I mean, I hear shit like I, 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 when someone says, thank you for your service. It fucking angers me. 
and I, I, I respond politely always. Uh, but really, I, you know, challenge them on this. Really, thank you for serving politicians, bankers, and war profiteers. Come on, you know better. Most people get a chuckle out of that, at least. And keeping it in that fun conversational realm is often more effective. As pissed off as I am, that when they say thank you for your service, what they are throwing at me is is a, a phrase loaded with not just bullshit and lies and pain and delusion, but the kind of delusion that leads to people voting for the duopoly over and over again, re-entrenching the military industrial complex, guaranteeing that this cycle will continue. And I say, no, let us break the cycle. Mrs. Blair on YouTube, my ex was a Marine, covered his tattoo of USMC. No. I can appreciate that. I will wear mine as a reminder next to my Iraq veterans against the war tattoo. And so I just say all this, that while I feel this truly intense anger every time, even someone says something as, as thoughtless, and by the way, the thoughtlessness is part of what bothers me, right? So thank you for your service. I have to remember why I am angry. I am angry not because I want to be angry, not because I want to make the world an angrier place. I am angry because I want peace, because I want love, because I want harmony. And so I'm again reminded of this quote from John Lennon that I have right here on my desktop in front of me for every show. John Lennon said, when it gets down to having to use violence, then you are playing the systems game. The establishment will irritate you, pull your beard, flick your face to make you fight. Because once they've got you violent, then they know how to handle you. The only thing they don't know how to handle is nonviolence and humor. And that's why today, my small victory for anti-militarism, my small victory for peace, my small victory for freedom came from calling an active duty army soldier a fuckface on Twitter. And with that, we have a great show lined up. Yes, James Wagner, I see real folks say thanks for fighting for our freedoms. Nobody is fighting for freedom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you want to be angry? Come home and tell them, be, be told, thank you for your service. Thank you for fighting for our freedom. And then told, oh, but if you want to medicate, you want you want you want to smoke pot as a veteran. This is changing, of course. We're almost there, almost done with this part of the drug war. You're a criminal. You're still a federal criminal, right? Still gonna you're still gonna cause an issue with the VA. You could get kicked out of your veteran housing. You get kicked out of veteran housing. You can lose your benefits. Lose benefits, and if you really want, oh, and, oh go to jail. But go there's, to there's jail. go to jail. There's that you know, <laughs> yeah. It's just, I, Oh, did you possess cannabis with a medical permit in your vehicle outside of your home? Too close to a school? Too close to a school? Oh, yeah. you can. No, you don't have that freedom. Or even in the privacy of your own home just to pursue real therapy and treatment like MDMA, psilocybin, all the alternative therapies that, oh, no, you're, not, you're free, but you're not that free. Yeah. Okay. So, to nonviolence and humor, for today's show, we got a COVID block. Yes, and plenty of humor there. We got an Afghanistan block. And by the way, the title of today's show is very important because I covered this story yesterday. And actually, I feel bad for not quite seeing all the way through this because I, I think I didn't say this, but it was in the back of my head. We'll get into this. The helicopter story, helicopter eyes without bullshit. Dude, hanging. Was in a harness, not a noose. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, no shit. Yeah, yeah. Fucking media. Yeah, no, he was he was one of the troops in a harness, riding, hanging from a helicopter, not hanging from a noose. Right? Yeah, so uh, there's that. Biases exposed. Uh, we're going to get into that story. We got a COVID block. Uh, you are not fully vaccinated in Israel now, unless you are triple jabbed. 
we've got uh so we got the taliban block we got the covid block we got some more good news stories we got some fun stuff uh before we get to producer notes and our co-host in just a minute here uh, a couple quick sort of weather uh, announcements to get out of the way. I don't. Maybe not announcements, but I. I don't. I. I always. I, I'm always torn covering weather events and anniversaries. Man, I don't even tell. I don't want to do like the weatherman thing. Like oh, over here, you see, well, well, we green screen in the studio. No, but I. It's, it's like how much is it news? Um, well, when there's a natural disaster, and I, I. I. I'm talking about two things today: the the fires in California and Hurricane Ida. Um, semi-natural disasters. <laughs> uh, somehow the 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 weather phenomena is natural. The disaster is a, 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 a sort of naturally resulting challenge. Uh, but overall, the disasters are man-made much worse than they would be otherwise. And in this case, The Hill has this headline, New Orleans imposes curfew to prevent crime in wake of Ida. Yeah, because that's what you need when you have an, a, a natural disaster like this. Government telling you when you have to stay in your home. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, Not your yeah. own common so, sense. New Orleans on Tuesday imposed a citywide curfew to prevent crime in the wake of Hurricane Ida. 8 p.m. to 6 p.m. It's going to be 6 a.m. That's got to be a typo. But right, you can't go out after 8 p.m. I mean, just, I, I know, like, most people go, well, my normal routine is this, and I only go out to, like, loot liquor stores after 8 p.m., so I guess it's not that big a deal. But you think, how many times have you had to, like, go to, I mean, I'm sure there's 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 all sorts of exceptions, right? But it means you're going to get harassed if, oh, well, you have to go see a neighbor to borrow a cup of sugar or maybe some medicine, or maybe you need to go to the drugstore after 8 p.m. for a, a minor medical emergency, or you, you have some kind of flare-up or something that you need some treatment for, or you need some toiletries, whatever it is to be comfortable. Well, guess what? On top of everything that's going on, New Orleans government's there to make it worse. And the power grid... Uh, is still going to be an issue for a long time in New Orleans. Louisiana governor tells Hurricane Ida evacuees it's too soon to return. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, more than 1 million homes and businesses in Louisiana and Mississippi without power, but restoration could take weeks, weeks, weeks without power for a million potentially in New Orleans right now. Healthy disrespect for authority on YouTube. I guess they missed the video of people looting in daylight. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Remember Hurricane Katrina? I, I got maybe you're afraid of like videos happening now. Like, and, and the, the thing about looting, and and, I, and I'm gonna say here's here's a dangerous, potentially unpopular opinion for a libertarian to have. I think I made this clear yesterday in a, in, in a different way, but to articulate it directly now, in overwhelming natural disasters, I am pro looting. I am pro theft. Yeah. You ready for this one? I'm gonna I'm gonna explain this one. Actually, we're gonna come back. We'll come back. This is this one. We'll do this one with Ant and Jim after we get them on in just a minute here. Yeah, you guys. Joey's like, uh huh. You see where this is going? Joey knows where this is going. All right, but yes, I am I am pro theft and looting in natural disasters, and I will explain exactly how. That is in line with libertarian principles and the non-aggression principle. After the fold, uh, one That's more natural one. disaster uh, worth a quick update here from CBS News. Caldor fire racing toward Lake Tahoe. I'm afraid it's going to burn down the jewel of California. Ugh. So, yeah, crews in California in a desperate fight to stop the Caldor fire as it races toward heavily populated areas around Lake Tahoe. Flames are now just three miles from the resort city of South Lake Tahoe, which hasn't seen danger like this in decades. Tens of thousands of homes there are under threat. Uh, Reuters evacuees anxiously follow the course of California fire near Lake Tahoe. So there is going to be a significant evacuation issue there when uh, we're seeing this fire in places that it isn't normally uh, for California. Places they're not, there are places in California that are kind of like used to fires. This isn't one of them. Whoop de doo on YouTube. We can't let the looters have stuff. It deserves to go into the garbage if people still aren't allowed to dig through. Yeah. Oh, there's that wastefulness angle. Remember that. We'll come back to that. Write, write that down, Ant. Uh, the Guardian 
This is just a fun little quirk in this story. Lake Tahoe Ski Resort uses snowmaking machines to fight wildfire. Cool picture there, right? Snowmaking machine blasting with uh, forest fire burning in the background, of course. Not celebrating this, but uh, celebrating cool little technological reapplication here. Uh, and I do want to point out, uh, one of my reservations about covering natural disasters is I feel as, as much as I acknowledge that I, I am an Arizonan living in Gardenia in the United States, within the borders of the United States of America as a U.S. Gardenia dual citizen and uh, a, a U.S. military veteran. I have an undeniable bias, but I'd like to think of Adam versus the man as uh, a news program for the whole human family. So I don't want to have a bias towards uh, American natural disasters, semi-natural disasters, natural disasters. With that, Jim, give us the producer notes. What's going on? Natural disaster. I just uh, there's a natural disaster with my microphone right now. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. Good timing, Jim. Good timing. Yeah, good save. Uh, <laughs> so we got no guests today. We got a great show we're going to get deep into the links i think we'll be able to get through all of them we're going to have some good uh discussion trying to figure out how adam's going to justify theft in a libertarian perspective so that'll be fun t.me forward slash adam versus man has all the links that we're going to cover for the show if you want to get more into the uh stories you already talked about or the ones we get ahead of time you can do so at t.me forward slash adam versus man that's a telegram channel telegram is a messenger app uh it's the greatest thing going right now you should definitely check it out get yourself connected uh, to that. If you want to check out how to support the show financially, you can do so on patreon.com forward slash Adam versus the man. we got one, five, 10, even $50 a month packages, $10 a month is the sweet spot that gets you access to the private producers club. Private producers club is where we share links ahead of the show. So if you have things you'd like to see talked about on the show and you're part of the producers club, that's where you'd put that link and it's a good chance it gets talked about and discussed on the show. So that's pretty cool. Uh, feature i think instagram at the garden of freedom we got a new picture up here of a beautiful cat perched up in the beautiful um, blue skies of arizona you want to see all kinds of good pictures and videos of life up in gardenia you can do so on instagram search at the garden of freedom and uh, visually stimulate your eyeballs with pleasure next we check out homefrontbattlebuddies.com, the best veterans nonprofit organization using alternative therapies to try to end the need for combat veterans in the first place. Uh, if you'd like to help them in their efforts, know that all of your donations to Homefront Battle Buddies are theft deductible, so that's the best feature around. Um, next, we check out the Crypto6.com, the Bitcoin church that was rated up in Keene, New Hampshire. If you're sitting flush on a bunch of cryptocurrencies, you can spare a little bit of them to these crypto, these QR codes. It helps these guys out with their legal funds. You can write to Mr. Nobody, who's still sitting in a cage, as far as I know, uh, with this top link right here. Definitely do that via the crypto, the number six dot com. Uh, next, we're going to show you GoGreenEnergyOnline.com. It's the website we send everybody to that wants to learn more about solar powers, micro wind power, just getting your home zero energy uh, self-sustained off-grid no matter where you live if you want to educate yourself to be able to do it yourself you can do so at gogreenenergyonline.com and the last promo i have for the day i think by now plenty of you already know what's coming is your daily slice of heaven here you go the most beautiful angel on the planet is my granddaughter and uh i'm still not sick of sharing the picture so i hope you enjoy have a good day <laughs> There we go. All right. So we got a quick story. We'll get and up here. We got a quick story. Jumped into the uh, producers club. Um, but we don't have the video for this. This is from WFLA.com. Arrest warrant issued for man accused of confronting NBC reporter on live TV. I, and I'm grateful that, that at least news channel eight NBC, which is uh, WFLA had the integrity to put in their title confronting NBC reporter. Um, but then they said, you know, he was uh, a simple assault, disturbance of the peace, violation of emergency curfew. And I'm like, well, yeah, you, we have the video. Yeah. Okay. Cause I didn't see the video wasn't in the story. I'm like, what? And at, for, obviously the, the, the government is going to protect the, you know, state media. Um, 
which in this case is is what uh, NBC and MSNBC reporter Shaquille Brewster, which is funny because it's coming from another NBC story. The the media is not monolithic. I won't pretend that it is it is so singularly minded. Uh, but simple assault disturbance of the peace for getting in someone's face. I like the story just said that. They didn't say he hit him or anything. There's nothing else to this. Um, but violation of emergency curfew. Again, yeah, right to speak to people on the streets, talk to reporters. Uh, yeah, no, it just goes away because emergency. You got the video? Let's play this. I think I do. It's loading. Pretty sure. All right, you want to get to Jim and the Producers Club, and then we'll and we'll talk about looting and theft and a libertarian society in an emergency. Uh, Ant, how you doing this morning? Man, I'm I'm doing all right. Sitting here at the the farm uh, or the uh, the camp of men, as they say, <laughs> you know, and women folk, I suppose. But there's very few of those out here. <laughs> women folk. Yeah, what's that? So what you see here? It, it's in for people who don't know, uh, Ant is in Texas at an oil and gas industry man camp. What's the actual gender ratio there? Uh, probably ninety eight percent men. Ninety eight percent. Good place to be a woman, right? If you like men. I, I got a friend that uh, maybe, maybe not. I, 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 I mean, I've had a similar experience. I, I mean, like when we were deployed, that's like that's what it was on the U.S. base. You know, a lot of military situations. Same thing leads to some weird dynamics, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, I have a female friend of mine who, incidentally, we both had the same wrestling coach, but at different schools. That same wrestling coach has now had two gold medal Olympians in wrestling, which is cool. But anyways, she came down here, and she's one of the very few females that I've known. Uh, and we became friends because we're from the same town. And her new guy uh, is also an employee where we work. So it wasn't hard for her to find guys. All the guys just flocked to her, you know? So. Yep, yep. And it's guys who are capable and have money and uh, are, are well compensated right now. At least uh, I hope you are. I mean, for putting up with what you put up with in corporate America. Now, oil well, and gas, man camps, are you dealing with COVID bullshit still? You know, they they tried for a while. Like, I actually got kicked out of one of the, the little cafeterias because I refused to wear a mask once. And I uh, had the Wait, employee. The cafeteria where people are sitting down and eating? Eating. I thought right. COVID doesn't hit you unless you're standing up, though. No, Isn't that I, I said the same thing. And then he said, uh, uh, he says, no, I don't care. You're going to have your mask on. I was like, it's like, I'm medically exempt. Well, where's your paperwork? I don't have to show you my paperwork to be medically exempt. He's like, yes, you do. I'm like, no, I don't. Anyways, I told him to, to fuck off. And then he chased me out, wanted to beat me up. The, the staff. So no, okay, it was, no, it was wait, hold on. I got I gotta understand that the, hold on, I gotta understand the corporate relationship and the premise here. Is this the company that you work for running a cafeteria or it sounds like a contractor? No, this is the company that this is like this is the company that we contract to put us up. So it would be the same as like you going to a hotel room. Is the staff like say at a hotel room if you want to get in your face and fight you and you're the one paying them. So like a company is paying somewhere like one point six million dollars per month to this company <laughs> and yeah. they got that big of a contract they're going to treat their patrons like that it's like so, and they back <laughs> off generally i mean you're not you're not yeah they they, yeah. they really have there's it's, it's a lot more relaxed than it has been that was back in uh october of 2020 uh, i believe is when that happened and that was the first time anybody's ever told me to wear a mask at the camp and it was the last time anybody told me to wear a mask at the camp but that guy wanted to fight me Gee, wow. yeah, well, petty tyrants, right? Uh, there's uh, a lot of places it, where shit's getting just realistic. I, I, I don't say shit's getting real. I don't mean like that, but people like, like, like in the like in oil and gas industry man camps in the United States, they're they're over the hysteria, right? And then there are some places where it's getting worse, and we're going to see that today. One of the predictions that, that I made, or things that I sort of observed. Um. Oh, uh, James Wagner has that to was add epic beard hair combo. That must be me, I guess. That, that, I think that's you. Of my shirt. If the troops defended freedom, they'd attack the government. It's one of my favorite this is shirts. An Adam versus the man shirt. We'll start making those again by the time we relaunch. Again, quick production reminder: next Tuesday, interview with Australian PM David Limbrick is our last 
show of this season in this format. It's been an awesome run. We are coming back after three weeks from that as a weekly, and uh, it, I'm I'm really looking forward to this. And so uh, we are going to come back with the website organized and merchandise by then. And that shirt, actually, there's I have a newer, better version of it. But that was my graphic with the uh, full metal jacket helmet repurposed in there. <clears throat> All right. So do we have we have the video? Uh, yeah, uh, I got the video. Uh, you want me to play it with audio exactly. so you can hear uh, everything, right? Yeah, it's a, it's yeah, a, a it. you need to hear it. Yeah, okay. Let me full screen this, give it a play. Here we go. Mississippi, are you, are you in and what do you see? Gulfport. He like pulls into the truck behind We're in him. Gulfport, Mississippi, Craig. And I'll tell you the biggest sign, the biggest indicator that I saw this morning about the force of the storm last night is that the mail delivery has returned. We saw postal workers going out delivering mail this morning. Just a couple of minutes ago, people were walking their dogs. They're back on the beach right now. And that's the sense that you're getting that the rain has stopped. The wind is still going there. I think we even have a random person going around. You know, I'm going to turn this way because, you know, we deal with some people every once in a while. But, <laughs> uh, you know, one thing that we are noticing is that the mayor said the curfew is still in effect. The curfew is going to be going on for at least a, until a period of time in which they can go ahead and go and survey all the damage. They did get some reports of some down power lines of some trees that have fallen or at least limbs that have fallen. So they're going to go ahead and do that survey to make sure that they're okay. Craig, I'm gonna toss it back to you because we have a person yeah. who needs a little yeah. help right now. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, <laughs> Wow. Hey, 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 hey. So he was just yelling off camera, bugging him, and then got in his face like that after he had, he let him finish his segment. And now you got cops at your and that, Yeah. Like, wow. Now, you know what's what what funny? You see how he goes and approaches. He goes to the camera crew first, actually. He doesn't just see dude in front of a camera and like jump in. He identifies probably, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming here. I could be wrong, but what walk it looks like is that he walk around and goes, oh, what, who is it? Oh, it's, it, and he looks at the guy's face and goes, oh, okay, it's Shaquille Brewster. It's one of these, you know, evil corporate propagandists, you know, let's, let's confront him. And, and actually in, in doing so was respectful of his, his presence or his humanity. I mean, maybe getting in your face like that, running up to someone, uh, his hands were down though. We didn't. We don't see the rest of the video. You only see that live part and the cutaway, right? I have right? seen drunks act way more unruly on news cameras live after a football game. Yeah, and right. Not get arrested. Yeah, like, this is not threatening. So this is this is what this is. Is it's a bad look. It's the, <laughs> it's the government enforcers, the police, violently suppressing someone who is challenging the lapdog corporate media. So wait, we got a still shot there. Is that his hand up? Is that his hand up? Or is yeah. that the other guy's hand? I can't. No, I couldn't white, tell. White I was trying to. Camera. You can't can we, tell can you like yeah. But there's no reports. Like it doesn't even say in the article. Yeah. No, so if if he had touched they would, him, they you would fucking know when they come after him like this. Now. No, that was the other guy's hand. Is, yeah, that was the other guy's hand yeah, with his was, microphone. So his hands were both down. Microphone, like to, to block to defend right, himself. Yeah, his hands were um, both down. I think he did that probably to make it obvious that he's not here to swing on him. He just wants to yell at him with his mouth because he thinks he's full of shit. Yeah, right. That's exactly. Was, yeah. That's he was boiled very, down to. He had his hands like way right back in. here. Like, nice I just want to yell at you, you piece of shit. His first yeah, things out so, of the first words out of his mouth were when he was running up is, are you reporting on this accurately? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and so I mean, well, and they thing. don't. Have you seen the clip where there's a guy pushing into the wind, like freaking out? And yeah, then, like, yeah, yeah. People yeah, walk no, by him all calmly, like, the fuck are you doing? So, I mean, that's accurate. Like, yeah, like, we have to There's a, a lot of on sensationalism, in even in weather reporting. And my favorite, there's a clip of this where it's like a woman in a canoe going, Floodwaters are out of control here. Oh, Two people are walking the by. Like, like, yeah, <laughs> oh, but there's so many of those out. You know, it's the same shit with COVID. Yeah. Remember when COVID yeah. coverage started? And we haven't done this. The interviewer had the mask, but the guy behind the camera didn't. Yeah. And he was in full was, hazmat. Yeah, yeah right. Like, in regular clothes. Yes. Yes, those ones. Tons of pictures and memes like that. And I guess. Since we call, maybe they've tightened up their propaganda a little bit since. Then. Oh shit, we can't quite get away with that and, and, anymore. Uh, but man, uh, the, in in this case, like, the, the, does I, I think there might have been a 
a more thoughtful way to do this. I'll sort of uh, criticize the hero of this story, Benjamin Eugene Dagley. Uh, maybe we'll have a follow-up for this. You know, maybe we'll uh, put put together a legal defense fund or something. Uh, maybe we'll see, see how. I I assume there's going to be so much attention around this. They're going to offer him a gentle plea deal, a relatively good plea deal on it. I'm waiting you know? for the he, white man attacks black anchor headline. He, he loses a little bit of credibility uh, when, no. like the way he he approached it. I think. I mean, I I applaud him for for having you know the the balls to do it. But he, I think he lost just a little bit of credibility when he's you know, you know, he might not had his hands well, on, but he still came at him fairly to... aggressively. Yeah. Well, yeah. So this is where credibility say, like, is the right word there, but he he could have done it differently. He could have done it more effectively. Yeah, like standing but... behind. Being funny about it, got like, hey, something. excuse me, sir. It's like, see, here's, here's, imagine, imagine if he like walked up to the reporter, like quietly from behind, like, be, like, you know, like maybe like Elmer Fudd style, you know, and then he creeps up behind, him, just ding, 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 ding on his shoulder. Uh, excuse me, sir, are you covering this accurately? Because there's a lot of bullshit going around. There's a storm of bullshit with the mainstream media. You know, you know it could have been, it could have been. Remember, uh, you know, it, it, again, it's, 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 well, hold on. Yeah, we're, I'm going to get to that, but it's 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 that it's the John Lennon attitude, nonviolence and humor. Because when you're being when you're being angry, they you're know being how to humor. handle you. It's, I mean, you might be fucking laughed at, <laughs> you know, but you're you're not being humorous. You're not connecting with other people with humor, and you're missing that opportunity, and you're creating. Uh, in, in a completely unnecessary confrontation, if you're engaging in a dialogue with someone, you can you can at least make an attempt. Say you, you to, to connect with with humanity. Humor seems like a higher form of uh, of that in in many cases. But just being able to say hi, how's it going? To to politely engage. Now to this guy's situation. Right now, in New Orleans, they've got a curfew. They've got power outages. They got forced evacuations. Why? Because and and why is government getting away with that? And, and getting away power thing is yes. Well, they're getting away with maintaining. Oh yeah, just our, our government regulated system of providing electricity through this monopoly oligopoly system, whatever. It's totally okay, and it's you don't have to worry about it going down in natural disasters. It's okay. But why does government get away with these things? Because the mainstream media sensationalizes and falsely reports. So maybe this guy's got some family. Who's deal? Who, who, who maybe he's got older relatives dying. who are dying because they don't have electricity in their homes and they can't get out 24 hours a day to get to a pharmacy. And and they're they're dealing with those logistical constraints. Maybe and he goes, it's because maybe they don't have food. And he goes, it's because of reporters like this. Can you? I, I say, for doing anything, for standing up, for 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 for. for Putting that check on the mainstream media, yeah, Absolutely. we're going to criticize tactics. Try better next um, time. Dude. And you gave him that excuse uh, to to come after you like this, uh, but uh, let's just take those lessons from someone who put himself on the front lines while driving down the street and took the out. Uh, and, and I encourage everybody to do this. see a mainstream reporter. Stop. Stop. Pull over. Take the opportunity. You, th there's a mainstream propaganda channel there. There is a signal. There are photons from that person's face going into a camera that are being broadcast somewhere that are going to be seen by millions of people. Pay the fuck attention. Check it because out. that's an opportunity. You want to go if, over you, there? I'll let you go over now, where you see cops. Like this. Now, seriously, you want to watch yeah, the news? Have your camera. Like cops. first thing is like have your camera out and be recording. Record that right? recording. But mm -hmm. approach politely, discreetly, maintain your situational awareness and, and see if they're doing the right thing because sometimes you might, be. you might be the asshole. Some, again, the media is not monolithic, but I'm just pointing this out as, as, as a, a tactic of activism since it came up in the Producers Club today as one that has some really positive potential because now we're talking about what Benjamin Eugene Dagley wanted us to talk about inaccuracy and weather reporting and how it negatively impacts people's lives. Yeah, so it definitely had a benefit for what he did. Making it made the news, but his it, we're gonna have to wait to possibly hear what his actual uh, response was supposed to be, and uh, for why he, or his reasoning. And whenever you're coming at them like that, and they just cut your feet because you're not, you know, they're they're not gonna air that. If he came at them in a more 
passive and more funny. They might have humored him for a little bit, just long enough for like the fucker and the pussy guy to get at least a comment out on what he was trying to say, you know, before they all oh, cut that feed. You know right. what I mean? So like, like the fun, Black Friday guy. So like, on, yeah, so like <laughs> honest, open media in that situation, reporter will handle it differently and be like, hey, we've got an, a breaking scene here of an irate local who has something to say. Sir, uh, do you mind if I finish my broadcast and then talk to you? Okay, cool. I'll talk to you. Or if he jumps in and they're like, no, I'm hijacking your stream, motherfucker, because I got something to say. You know, then, then it, it can unfold in a in an open, again, humorous and human connecting way rather than the, you know, the angry confrontation. But, I, I, you know, again, to, to Dagley's credit, it is more important that we acknowledge the bigger tragedies resulting from dishonest media than, you know, we, we get hung up on decorum and dealing with them. What's this one? Um, yeah, I'm not sure what they're we're going on about on this one. I'm I've, I I agree that I don't understand, uh, but if anything, I'm being sympathetic, uh, absolutely sympathetic to, right, to this gentleman. The context of that. Yeah, it's it's gonna yeah. be bad, so, and stressful down there. Of course, your emotions are high. Like, so let, let's see if we can talk to this guy. I'd love to interview uh, Benjamin Eugene Dagley if he's doing it. His lawyers are probably saying no. Don't say anything publicly. Yeah. Maybe but maybe. Uh, let's reach yeah. out to him. Let's see if we can get him on the show. But that's a perfect segue to libertarian justification for looting and theft during a natural disaster. And yesterday, uh, the to stop looting policy came up in our coverage. And I said, well, I, why would you stop someone from going to a grocery store that they depend on for food because the power's out and the grocery store can't sell them that? And if you don't let them go in and get the food. It's just going to go bad anyway. And as our commenter pointed out yesterday, that a lot of these laws create waste when they say like you, you, you know, you have to throw out food if it's, you know, hits its expiration date, but you can't give it to homeless people. You know, you can't give it to someone who's starving. You have to throw it out and destroy it. And so I'm going to go back and rely on Stefan Molyneux's explanation with a specific example this is this is the good stefan molyneux the old stefan molyneux you know before he went trump tard uh, yeah the, the original stefan molyneux uh stefan molyneux the the philosopher not the propagandist uh but he was talking about the example of someone dangling off of a building say you fall say you're 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 and this is a you know crazy example but it, it makes the point you know if if you're, you're washing windows on the side of a building and your harness breaks or something, you can't get up or you're, you're, you're dangling. The only way for you to not die is break the window of an apartment and go into that apartment, swing in and live. The libertarian ethos does not dictate, oh no, you that's somebody else's window. You can't break that. That would be a violation. You have to suffer and die. No, no, no. That is an oversimplistic misunderstanding, misapplication of libertarian, totally. uh, libertarian principles and the non-aggression principle. And and it's it's not that there can never be a violation of the non-aggression principle. It's just an understanding as a statement of fact that you, by virtue of owning yourself, are responsible for your actions so if you break a window to sit to save your own life all you got to do is pay for the window everybody's good you know no the, a reasonable apartment owner is not going to say oh you broke my window there you need to die no think right. about it like basic concepts of of justice and so it's we, we made this point, I think Monday, I made another dumb point about like, oh, look, if I flick Joey's forehead without asking her permission first, I'm assaulting her and violating the non-aggression principle. You know, what is, you know, a violation of the non-aggression principle? Yes, it technically is. But think again, what is the purpose of libertarianism? Or, or rather, if we embrace the truth that is libertarianism, why do we do that? Right. It's because we want to maximize value. We want to make human life better for people. So part of the application of the philosophy and the understanding of justice and ethics and the non-aggression principle is that we get to prioritize based on market demand with freedom of choice. What violations of the non-aggression principle are we going to uh, apply our dispute resolution services to? Is well, Joey going to file a complaint on social media because I flicked her on the forehead without her? No, of course not. Does yeah. the non-aggression uh, principle apply so, to survival, though? I mean, if, if you're not doing it for 
any other reason other than self survival. Like you said, we we are we own ourselves and responsible for our own our, our own everything. And if, if by survival if you're only going as a survival means, like you said, you make reprimands afterwards. Like, hey, look, I had to do this for my survival. It's not really a violation at all to, to call it a violation of the. You know, it, it, you know, it is a violation. Yeah, you're so, it is a violation, you're, you're, but you're, you have to make the victim whole. Is all. Yes. Yes. And 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 and. And I'm glad you tried to phrase it that way to put it in terms of principle of doing it for survival. It's not doing it for survival that is the criteria. It's that you are making a judgment that more value will be created by your actions than destroyed. And you take as a libertarian, as an ethical person, responsibility for your actions. So another sort of dumb hypothetical in this that, that's fun to bring in for the thought exercise is the Heimlich maneuver. If you see someone choking and they're not signaling, they're out of control. Like, I mean, if you go like this, this is accepted as a signal in our in our world. Please give me the Heimlich maneuver. I'm choking. Please help me. You can violate my body physically to help me with this choking situation, right? But it's always just flailing, choking, <coughs> and when you give them the Heimlich maneuver, you go, oh, well, that's not a violation. You're not going to you know, say, oh, well, you did that because you, vi yes, you violated their self-ownership. Yes, you took control of their body. The result was their life was saved. So they're going to be grateful for that, even though it was Maybe. technically a violation. Well, Maybe. now there's a fun <laughs> counterexample to this that comes from that doctor idiot from um, Arrested Development where he, he, he thinks that someone is choking and they're not. And he goes up to them at the pool and, and like pounds on them and then breaks a couple of their ribs. It's like, yeah, you're, well, you're fucking responsible for that shit too. Right. And says, sorry to say, but libertarianism has become more important than Liberty. Uh, well, even then Liberty is not the ultimate value. The ultimate value is value. How do we maximize the value out of the human experience? Right. So, yeah, we're getting into these like esoteric rabbit holes, but I think it's important for libertarians to understand this in order to you know, not say, oh, well, my philosophy doesn't apply in a looting situation or dangle off a bill. It just as much applies. In fact, it's all the more important to understand ethics and apply it consistently in a disaster situation when people are suffering following a hurricane, following a power outage that's going to last possibly weeks for a million people. Yeah, Ed should put that up. Michelle, who said you don't know how it is, responded and explained. She said the reason they have curfew is because most people are evacuated, because no power or sewage. Many people are stealing and taking advantage of the people leaving. So Michelle's making the case that the government's helping protect everybody right now. With so, so I, I mean, I'll, I'll concede this point that there may be on the fringe some benefit if like, hey, if the government is going to force people out of their homes to provide security for their homes. But the curfew is a really dumb, shitty way of doing it. And this still falls under the framework of government breaking your leg and then asking you to thank them for giving you a crutch. The criminals that, are still right? going to go out and at so night this is, too. Yeah, like, the criminals can go happen. out during the day. The criminals can go out at night. <laughs> it's, it, it's sort of like it, it, you look at the policy. So, I, I, I mean, you might be telling me, Michelle, that there's a legitimate good intention that is going to have unintended consequences by some people involved in the curfew policy. But I guarantee the people who created it know what's going on. The consequences are not unintended for them. They are completely intended. They know what's going to happen. So in a situation where it comes to petty retail goods, in a disaster situation that's so bad that people are abandoning homes and businesses, if you're looting for survival or comfort in that or, or helping other people in that disaster situation, I think in terms of all, you know, retail value of, I mean, maybe you don't, maybe it's not appropriate to start like stealing cars at random, but if you need a car to get out of somewhere to save your life, then fucking steal a car. If the asteroids right? come and you but gotta go, man. When it comes to wire, basically good. all retail shit, and I'm not talking about breaking it, but this, this applies to private, we're talking private property, this applies to people's homes as well. I think it's a different situation. I think there's a different loss of value created if you have to raid your neighbor's home for food than if you have to raid a Safeway for food. But if you have to survive either way, 
you're just as justified. So with that conscientiousness in mind of that val relative value justification, uh, I think I can say as a libertarian in a situation where there's a natural disaster uh, of this magnitude of, of suffering, of deprivation, of access to food and electricity and water and normal retail conveniences, I am pro looting when it comes to uh, common retail establishments. Pro looting for the survival, because if you in those if circumstances, you watch, if you watch the news, it's TVs and and electronics. Like there are your career yeah. opportunistic criminals, or maybe not, maybe not, maybe they're not criminals normally, but opportunistic folks that go, oh, shit, I can go get a free TV. That's that's not survival. I'm yeah, sorry. and I, yeah, I wouldn't justify that. I'm I'm again pro looting in the realm of supporting comfort and dealing with comfort survival and dealing with the disaster not personal enrichment no uh, if it, if it's for that that would be uh, contrary to libertarian principles well, they might be they might be saying oh man the hurricane literally just flattened my house and i've lost everything i need a bunch of tvs that i can sell to get some money to be able to survive you know mm -hmm. well that's, in that you know, sense that's a stretch yeah. it's a stretch but i'm just, we're just playing hypotheticals here you know the point yeah. is if you're leaving town you got a van you lost everything and it's basically that's, abandoned that's your property money. there. That's your, yeah, that's that's a resource at that point. Very yeah. that's a good point, Jim. Yeah, I mean, so, maybe so they're again, saving it from being rained on and ruined in the weather. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, I'm just protecting the TV like the government's protecting us. The most yeah. important thing to remember <laughs> in this is that libertarian principles are not absolutes uh, compared to other philosophies, compared to the wishy washiness and personality driven propaganda bullshit of the old parties we like to think as libertarians that that we have absolute principles and we do have absolute principles but the application of them is always subject to subjective interpretation and that subjective interpretation has to be based on how do we apply these absolute principles in a pragmatic way to make people's lives better and if if you prioritize you're clinging to intellectual neatness or the purity of those principles as or, or the application you're going to come across as an asshole i think a lot of libertarians fall into that trap of well we're against looting we're against theft no they shouldn't do it. well but all these other things are wrong too yeah no you have to say look at this from a human perspective and and you go yeah um if it if, it, if it's uh maximizing value and people are taking responsibility for their actions then yeah looting and theft in the interest of, uh, you know, saving lives and, and dealing with these difficult situations is definitely justified. I mean, it blows my mind in the first place that we even have to have this discussion and how all these big box stores like Safeways or something that they, they are billionaires, you know, the, the top level of corporations and they can afford to have one store get rid of all of its stuff to its local Inventory. population yeah. so that it doesn't go bad. They could literally, I mean, I, I just can't understand how a person could be sitting in a room. It's like, hmm, well, we can throw it away or give it to people. You know, we should throw it away. That's the right thing to do. How do you come up with it being the right that. thing to I'm, do? I'm you know? thinking of like, right, 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 right. A lot of it's policy. A lot of it. But, but they set the policy. The big corporations set the policy by their lobbyists. I worked lobbyists, at a rescue right? mission doing volunteer work, food bank stuff, and they were on us about make sure nothing's expired on the shelves because they send auditors through to ding the volunteer organizations that are feeding the homeless for fuck's who sake. Who sends those auditors? The government. The and state. who sets the government policy to send them? The corporations. They lobby for it. It's, it's safe ways. It. Right. It, and it's not necessarily safe way. It's more like Cargill and Monsanto. The big guy. And, you know, the, the really, yeah. and I, I'm not an expert in the structure of big agra uh you know who who owns what uh or in big food processing production or whether even the grocery store oligopoly that we have in america is even a relevant lobbying force yeah. uh but it's it's those people beating up on individuals and in homeless shelters and sent it's their goons you are like and i'm not saying they're not government but like recognizing the impetus who is whose goons are those really? You know, they're really the, the goons of the people who set the policy. Anyway, so there. 
l- anything else to wrap this up before we get into our uh, Afghanistan block here? Uh, well, real quick, one thing on a lighter note, what you were saying earlier about the uh, about the guy with the news cameras and everything. I liked what you suggested that people should be ready. It was almost like a call to action. If you see a news place do, doing a live stream, try to get behind them. Yeah, be and ready it, to it poke made, them. Right. And it made me think, I wonder if there's anything we could come up with that could be a really good, like if you could come up with a one or two word hashtag slogan of some kind that really hits the heart of the covid and and have yeah. people having a yeah. have a sign a have sign, a sign with that ready sign in your behind car a reporter or whatever. is probably more effective totally. for most people. Right. Most people don't have the think on your feet and the verbal confidence to engage in the way that I suggested that in my ideal situation that Bagley, you know, go up and do this clever thing. Cause it's easy for me to even in a studio, yeah, of course I can sit here and come up with clever ideas all day. If you can have a sign, if there's something that's a message that's compelling to you as a sign to have, keep it in the back of your car at all times, you know, and right. be, be ready to jump out and just stand behind a reporter with your with your silly sign and make right. it make a national moment out of it. And get your uh, get yourself a tripod so you can put your phone on it and record yourself <laughs> doing the whole thing and promote it. You know, I mean, seriously, it sounds silly, but that's yeah. a, video is king, man. People are we live in a video age. People want to watch the video and be inspired to join in the the revolution. You know. Or All right. Well, whatever. speaking of watching the video, we have a fact check rewind on a story from yesterday to kick off our Afghanistan blog, Jim. Get out of here. Get this one up here and keep the comments coming. Our next link, usatoday.com. Fact check. Video shows Taliban fighter attached to helicopter, not public hanging. And when we saw this yesterday, uh, I, I I covered this. And I was like, you know, there's got to be some justification. I, I went with the wrong angle with this on the air. I got to admit, I, I went the wrong way thinking like, well, if they're doing this, you know, the story's got to be that it's just, like the, the, the guy that's hanging has got to be, you know, somebody who you got a bunch of children killed with a drone strike or some shit like that. Right. And we go, all right, understandable. Um, but it, what I think is really important is that we, we see these stories about the Taliban. That we just scrutinize based on what we know of humanity. Because a lot of these stories are being reported in the framework of dehumanizing the enemy. This is still something that humanity really needs to work on. This is a, this is a big fucking deal. And I th- I'd like to think that we live in a you know, globally connected world and everybody can be humanized, but they can also be hugely dehumanized when people aren't paying attention. And I, I'm hearing people compare the Taliban to the Nazis, and it's like, wait, in the Afghanistan war, if it was the U.S. military versus the Taliban, which one of those was was, was occupying a country on the other side of the planet as opposed to their home country? Oh yeah, the, what, what were the Nazis doing again? Mm, yeah, so I, I'm I, I'm not again. I, I'm cautious to not jump to the Taliban or the People's Militia of Afghanistan. And this Scott Horton uh, pointed out to me that they are the People's Militia of some people of Afghanistan, not, you know, of all people. And they're not perfect. They're still a government. They're still trying to rule. But who knows, maybe as the rebels who just defeated the empire, they're of a, I mean, they're not the same people they were 20 fucking years ago. 20 fucking years ago. So to expect them to be the same is, is ridiculous. Jim, thank you for getting this video up. This is the Taliban hanging someone from a helicopter in Kandahar uh, was came from a comedian and stoic libertarian legend. It's funny they're trying to blame this on like a libertarian. It's a libertarian on Twitter. Yeah, wrote uh, tweeted this on August thirtieth. But the thing is, that got two point six million views, and the claim that the U.S. used a U.S. supplied helicopter to hang someone as a gruesome public hanging became the story. And there are a lot of people who are spreading this propaganda deliberately. Military industrial complex, online trolls. They want to dehumanize the enemy. They want to make it easier to go to the next war, right? They want you to to, to, to go, oh my God, 2,500 American military died, never mind tens of thousands of Afghan civilians. 
Ricardo the Lionhearted on YouTube. I don't trust any mass media that uses CIA spoon fed news. Manufacturing consent is all they do. Now, to but to this video, so there are some people, like I said, who have to dehumanize the enemy. There are some people in the United States who are militarists. They believe in militarism as a religion, so they will promote any narrative that justifies American military efforts, whatever they may be, even though they're all criminal imperial efforts, essentially. If they are going to see something like this, they're immediately going to take this as the opportunity. We don't have to trick them. You put this footage in front of, I don't know, how many Americans would, would do this? You put this front footage in front of that many Americans, you know, I don't know, a quarter of the American public, they're going to go, Taliban hanging someone, Taliban evil, they're bad. Let me share without even looking into the story. But at a bigger level, psychologically, deeper level psychologically, and this is why I'm a big fan of the slow impact of the internet effect bringing people together causing us to recognize that we are a global human family seeing that there are not people who are not people but somehow dehumanized on the other side of the planet they're all human but the natural human psychological tendency to bolster our own egos our own sense of self is called downward social comparison hence downward social comparison theory you can look up if you really want to get into the subject and downward social comparison theory is actually summed up possibly best by what is often attributed as a, a muslim or an arab traditional saying me against my brother me and my brother against our neighbors me and our neighbors against the next neighborhood our city against the next city, our province against the next province, and our country against the neighboring country. And and, and it, it, it explains that sort of, you know, pyramid of outgroups until you get to the whole human family. And I think what is most important in that internet effect of connecting people is that you don't see that disconnect or that dehumanization anymore. But the point of downward social comparison theory is that at all of these levels of in-groups and out-groups, we like to see ourselves as better. And you could describe this perhaps as a deficiency in the human ego, for which psychedelic-induced ego death might actually be the right prescription. Regardless, the increase in mental health awareness of humanity is strengthening the human ego. The being better at raising our kids, you know, Dr. Spock, hey, if you beat your kids, they're going to come out dumb. Well, they're also going to come out psychologically beaten down, less accepting of others as a result, because in order to bolster their own egos, they're going to need to see, well, me and my brother, we're better than our neighbors. Well, me and my neighbors, we're better than those people in that other group. Well, me and my religious group, we're better than the people in that other religious group. Well, me and my ethnic group, we're better than the people in that other ethnic group. Well, me and my nation my tribe, my country, we are better than the others. And a lot of Americans are victims of a massive planned psychological manipulation that leads you to be beaten down, to cling to that nationalism, to seek out strong leaders who are going to motivate and inspire and give you confidence in what is going on in your subconscious which is your brain saying, well, I'm not good enough by myself, but if I'm part of this bigger team, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and gosh darn it, my government loves me because I'm obedient. No, no, no. These are the biases of human psychology that mean so many people when they see this story, man dangling from a helicopter, they go, <gasps> Taliban evil, but it's okay because I'm I'm one of the good guys. I'm part of I'm I'm one of the white people, and white people are better than Arabs. Oh yes, we don't hang people from helicopters. Oh, I'm one of the Americans. I'm not one of those people living in the Middle East, those crazy backwards. But oh, I'm one of the Christians. I'm not a Muslim. I'm just part of the empire that killed tens of thousands of civilians, not the crazy Muzis defending their homeland. No, those are the bad people because they do these atrocity things. And you go, Abu Ghraib pissing on 
dead Taliban fighters, uh, I mean, I, uh, drone striking children at wedding parties. I mean, you go on and on and on. And this is why, again, I take this as the point to say, well, the fact that not every last man, woman, and child in Afghanistan, the fact that they are not already terrorists or suicide bombers coming after the people who did this to them is a great testament to the restraint of Muslims. So, yeah, in this case, the video does not show a public execution. Another angle of the incident shows the man is alive. Several media and fact-checking organizations have reported the clip shows a Taliban fighter trying to hoist the flag on a building in the city of Kandahar. And the, yeah, so uh, funny little story behind this. They were having like a flag raising thing and they didn't know how to get one up to the top. So oh, we'll use the helicopter to hang a guy out and to hang a flag. And then they failed and they got this video that, oh my, we're the, the mainstream. And, and you know what? You are going to be telling this story for fucking years. Mark Twain, quote, a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is just putting on its shoes. Well, think of all the uncensored media outlets on YouTube and the mainstream media that covered this as man hanging from helicopter. And then what are we shadow banned here? Someone said, oh, yeah, we got we got 43 viewers, quarter million subscribers, flatlined at that for the last decade here on YouTube. Almost decade. So I, I'm grateful for our small audience here who is willing to hear the truth and be spreaders of the truth because like I said you're gonna be tell you're gonna be telling this story. You well the Taliban, you know, hanging from helicopter. You know, no, no, fake news. You're gonna have to point this out to people. And they're not gonna believe it. And that's the danger of the world we live in and the biases. And while I can complain about this and fight against this and we are gonna tell talk about how this applies to the next stories we're gonna get about Afghanistan. Uh, Ed Vallejo says you can clearly see he's in a harness. Yeah, so Ed, you can see in this video, but what was be what went viral was was a shorter clip where you don't see his body moving. And I looked at it and I go, it doesn't really look like a hanging, but it could be, you know. But I I and and I gotta say it's my fault for not getting into this as thoroughly as I should have yesterday because I could have figured this out yesterday. Uh, and I brought you this story and was like, I don't I don't I don't see it. Twenty four hours later, I'm vindicated. It's faster now. The news cycle is faster. The correction is faster. But it still requires us. It requires people who care about truth and justice to spread it and to share the story and make sure that people know that this is what really happened. And, and, and this is important to humanizing the Taliban. In the longer term, I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm more confident in the Internet effect destroying that psychological deficiency. The end of the drug war the improvements in mental health, the improvements in education, as we have a COVID homeschooling story today to talk about. Learning. Yes. I'm um, no good. Good news. Good news. I like, I yes, like, yeah. This is the one more, good yeah. thing from COVID. Yes. I think one of the big silver linings. A homeschool revolution. Yes. yes. But right now, we also have to combat the misinformation about the Taliban and the threat of terrorism, because this is where it is going to be used to create more militarism and expand the empire. David Bruce on YouTube. Where can I find a link to accurate coverage of this? T.me slash Adam versus the man where you can get our show notes. And I post other links there throughout the day. And again, just so people know, as, as actually we're taking three weeks off from the live video production like this, a big part of what I'm going to be doing during that time is developing that Telegram channel. So I post, I post a lot of memes on there. Voluntarist memes, another great channel on uh, on Telegram. If you want to follow them, I forward the good ones to T dot me to, to the Adam, Adam versus the Man channel. Uh, apparently, if we if we get uh, we should be able to get custody or ownership of the uh, of the channel from our former producer tomorrow. If the seven days lock is up and 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 we'll get that straightened out one way or another, though, you're going to see a lot more of me on telegram doing live videos uh over the next three weeks and really developing that as a channel so we do the weekly show it'll be wednesday evenings what made me say this comment what was it someone oh, was where it do we about? find the links to oh where do we find the links so t.me slash adam versus the man thank you for bringing me back to that is also what i, I is kind of going to serve as my response to the drudge report as a link aggregator and we're going to be using the production team. And, and I hope to have a team behind me 
to really make the Adam versus the man telegram channel, everything that it can be. Um, I'm going to get off Instagram. I'm fucking done. It's Facebook. Like I, I don't want to be on Instagram anymore. Um, I'm, I'm going to make, I I've been, it, it's been on my to-do list for a while. And in the back of my mind, but I'm going to make this as a public pledge now to the audience. By the time we come back three weeks from, from next Tuesday or next Wednesday, I'm going to be off. I'm going to be off Instagram. It's gonna be off my phone. I'm going to, I'm going to put up a, Gone well, fishing sign. No, team, find me at t.me slash Adam versus man. Your team will be active on social media platforms, directing everybody there for you. Well, there's that too. But I, I, I think this is the time now for me uh, to live up to the principles that I've been espousing in terms of conscientious internet use and social media use and distribution. What's this? And part of it's just healthy district. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it, healthy disrespect for authority says telegram discriminates against non-internet connected phone users. What's that mean? I've, and I've heard a couple of people. Oh, that's, that's about true. Not being so if you have, a, if you have a, yeah, telegram is data only. If you have a clamshell, you can't use it. Tough shit. I'm sorry. So if you're, if your phone is connected by phone Wi-Fi, only. it's. But you, no, no. Maybe. If you have a clamshell, if it doesn't do data, a, oh. a clamshell phone, a flip phone oh, yeah. will text and voice over cellular, well, some of them have data. I guess all flip phones have so, data. And if, too. Is, if you have, but if you have, if you have an app, you have an app or a desktop, you can have a Mac computer, you can have an Apple computer, or either one of those. Uh, or, I'm sorry, you can have a you can have a Windows system, you can have an Apple OS system, uh, you can have um, Linux, you can have any 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 desktop laptop operating system can run desktop telegram. I, that's what I do during the show. Uh, any phone that can run apps and, and it, it's in the app store, you can get, you can download telegram. And so to say that they discriminate, yeah, there's a technical limitation. Yes. It's an internet function, but you can even if it, so healthy disrespect saying if they get on their computer to do, to join telegram, they still have to text a verification code and it won't text it to the non-smartphone phones. There's a way around that. Really that's an interesting challenge. I, I there's gotta that's, be something that's, though. Okay. Healthy disrespect, reach out to um reach out to the help. There, there's there's a help section. I have Linux, they won't verify. Them. Okay, so the account verification, I didn't consider that. That's a different thing because I because when I verified mine, it was it was by my phone number on my phone with the app before I even yeah. had it on my Computer. laptop. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know what to sell, tell you there. I'm pretty sure there's a way around it, though, like to verify an account. I think you can just do it with an email. I don't think you need a phone number to create an account on Telegram. I, I might be wrong there. But even if that's the limitation, that doesn't really change my perspective on it at all. Sorry. And and I, I really do respect that there are people who are so conscious or, or the, their consciousness and their interaction with the Internet and technology is such that it creates those limitations but if you're watching this on youtube dude you figure out a way to watch youtube telegram so i mean you got an ad a browser like yeah be, you'll figure I it out customer support um, is there, but yeah for but again for support. for and, and i i'm not disrespecting the one percent of people who might join our channel who um you know would, would have those technical uh limitations but uh, we'll do what we can to help you. And I'm still excited about Telegram as, as a, an honest You're getting a lot of platform. complaints about Telegram in this chat. Complaints about Telegram? Is, is, it all, is it the only thing that they're saying uh, on the verification thing? No, though? Cameron Ireland says Telegram sucks because it downloads all the videos. If you're on a phone, it fills up space so fast. Ed's it's in the settings. So, it's in the settings. Okay, that doesn't happen to me. General, hold on, but it, that does not happen to my phone. Change your settings in Telegram. Those are your app settings. The you know what? It's, it, it's a totally reasonable complaint. Yeah. But the complaint here is not that it does that automatically. The complaint would be that those are the default settings and you have to go into the settings and change sure. that if you have that, if you want. But that's true about every app. If you're data conscious that way. And for me, for what I follow, um, like, for instance, voluntarist memes, they post videos. Um, and they, they, it's mostly pictures and, and a couple comments. Some, you know, But uh, they do a few videos, but they're usually never more than like three minutes. And if you pull it up, I mean, you can set, I think, I can't remember what my settings are at because I don't really care. I don't have that Look, issue. Yeah, my it's so little off. data for me on the T-Mobile full everything data plan that, that I don't care. Telegram is not an issue that way. So to accuse Telegram of being a data hog, also not, an, not a fair accusation 
because you control it based on what you subscribe to and what your settings in the app are. I think the settings are at that way default so that if someone is messaging you and they send you a clip of their puppy playing in the backyard or of them stripping naked for you, you know, they don't, you don't, oh, well, go down. It pops up automatically and that's kind of convenient, right? All right. So helicopter rides, fake bullshit, fake news. So next, what's up next in our fake news headline that's soon going to have a correction from foxnews.com. Taliban commit house-to-house -house executions in Kabul after U.S. exits as chilling audio demonstrates Afghan's fear. Afghan man who helped the U.S. on the ground. I, I have no idea how to leave. Now, I'm not going to say that this is a complete fabrication. Um, that there aren't some... I mean, if, if you're the Taliban, they're, you're at, at this point, there are going to be rogue elements of your organization out there. That's totally, yeah, understandable, I guess. There are competing militias as, as you know, our next headline has a, a bit of a more reasoned explanation or overview of what's going on in Afghanistan and, and, and the, the situation that the Taliban is facing right now. Uh, but this is definitely getting overblown. Um, we're hearing in, we're hearing a couple isolated incidents. Um, of people being sought out or or killed, um, you know, the, by by the Taliban. Um, but if you look at what they're broadcasting, look at their original sources. I mean, they empty they're emptying jails. Um, there are going to be there's going to be a lot of people there, but what this is being spun by the American mainstream media to fit this narrative to satisfy the psychological impulses of beating down Americans with downward social comparison theory to be like, hey, you know what? We're, yeah, we screwed up in Afghanistan, but don't feel too bad. Taliban's worse. That there, That's a big part of the underlying sort of unspoken psychological message that the mainstream media is playing into here. But their bigger incentive, of course, is to feed into the narrative of the military industrial complex, create another excuse for more war. So I think this is one of those things that is, is the most dangerous right now in the propaganda around Afghanistan, is that they're going house to house, they're murdering people for having cooperated with the Americans. Well, I mean, I don't wanna be unsympathetic to the traitors here, but let's say America was invaded by the Chinese. And Adam Kokesh over here said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm a Chinese style communist now. I'm with them. I'm going to I'm going to help them. I'm going to rat out all my neighbors who have guns because Chinese love gun control. We're going to have full gun control in America. Guns are going to be banned. And they start going house to house and raiding. And then kids get murdered. Dogs get shot. And it's these people directly here. It's only because I helped the Chinese go do that. How would you feel about me? Imagine then the, Chi the the American rebels here, despite me helping the Chinese, somehow beat the Chinese empire out of America. And I'm sitting here like, hey, guys, uh, uh, we're cool, right? No, we're fucking not. And so if they're not going door to door, it would be another extreme testament to their restraint, but they're also not stupid. And this is why they have taken the approach of forgiveness, at least officially, and in their main narrative of what they're trying to get out, this is the policy of the Taliban. Again, I don't deny that there are gonna be some rogue elements, that there are gonna be other militias, that there are gonna be plenty of people who like, imagine again, imagine if I turn Chinese troops on you and your family, Would you take that line down? No. The fact that, 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 that Afghanistan is not an absolute murderous bloodbath as they, because the U.S. was there for 20 years. Everybody who could have been bribed into being a traitor had been. There's a lot of people. For a lot of them, 
joining the Afghan National Army was their only opportunity for a job? Did they actively participate in pointing out and helping the Americans murder innocent Afghans? Probably not. They would certainly deserve forgiveness in that situation. And I'm grateful that it, se it seems that the Taliban is taking that approach. I think it's too soon to, d to decide, but I'm looking at uh, on Twitter. I'll go back to my, my Twitter feed. Uh, thanks again to Justin O'Donnell, uh, who actually messaged me on Telegram with a couple accounts to follow in Afghanistan. And uh, I, I retweeted one or a few of these from Suhail Shaheen, who is uh, just uh, S-U-H-A-I-L, Suhail Shaheen, S-H-A-H-E-E-N, Suhail Shaheen 1 on Twitter. And um, this is, he is on, according to his profile, member of the negotiations team and political office spokesman for international media. That's for the Taliban. <laughs> yeah. And their public statement is all female employees of the Ministry of Public Health, both in provinces and in the capital, are informed to resume their jobs in a regular manner. I, by the way, this is translated from Arab, so I'm, I'm smoothing out a little bit. Having yet to call them uh, So I, I speak just a little bit of Arabic enough to understand that the language structure and the transliteration makes it almost impossible to have perfect direct translations, which again feeds into the dimini, dimini, diminution, whatever, the demeaning of the other, the outgroups through downward social comparison theory, because we look at all the transliterations or direct tweets from any kind of uh, native Arab speaker. If they're tweeting in Arab and translating in English, it's going to come out fucked up. But even for uh, you know people who speak English uh, who are native Arab speakers, the differences in, in the structure of the language often makes things come, come out sounding kind of awkward. So I don't know. I, I mean, I should, I should probably read it word for word, but with that caveat, I don't feel like I have to sort of smooth things out, but fuck man. I do that a lot with the mainstream media stories too, because they just get like all sorts of typos and wordos and they'd be shocked how, how much the, the, the credible mainstream media can't even afford to proofread. Um, he also said tonight, 12 p.m. Afghanistan time, the last American soldier left Afghanistan. Our country gained full independence. Praise be to Allah. Heartfelt congratulations to all countrymen. Um, and uh, there's another uh, account he recommended, uh, Malang Coste. Malang is M-A-L-A-N-G. Coste, K-H-O-S-T-A-Y. Malang Coste, just like that on Twitter. Uh, tweeting pictures of Bagram prison. No more prisoners. Beautiful. All the doors open and a member of the Taliban proudly holding up uh, a giant pile of handcuffs. Um, so, I mean, this is, this is really uh, what I'm seeing as, as directly on the ground really contradicts the mainstream narrative of, well, the Taliban, the evil uh, authoritarians have taken over and are going house to house committing executions in Kabul. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, I'm going to have to say fake news on that for now. I don't know how, how fake I don't pretend to, 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 to be an expert here. Maybe, uh, you know, we can get some guests on or someone in the producers club wants to share more sources that are going to be more readily available in the coming weeks. But I, this is going to be revised. I guarantee it. The, the, the this whole narrative is, is reminiscent of uh, Iraqi troops are murdering Kuwaiti babies in incubators in the hospital. Remember that fake story that helped uh, justify the first Gulf War? Yeah. And then just turned out to be a complete fabrication. Um, Mrs. Blair on YouTube. Adam, what is your view on Tim Kennedy and the Osama killer O'Neill? Um, Tim Kennedy, uh, the MMA fighter who uh, I think I've interacted with him on Twitter a few times. Leave, leave those names up. Tim Kennedy um, seems like a, seems like a good guy. Um, but when it comes down to it, you know, obedience is a virtue in dogs, not in men. 
And he exhibits a kind of obedience to militarism that, that I find disturbing uh, and dangerous. And I understand when you're in combat sports and you got to project a, a machismo, it's very tempting when mainstream masculinity is so toxic to embrace toxic masculinity to, to appeal to that macho marketing incentive. Uh, as opposed to divine masculinity, which is 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 confident enough to not be a bootlicker, to not be obedient and subservient, but to stand uh, in your own sense of of truth and justice and righteousness. And then uh, the Osama killer O'Neill, that's the that was the Navy SEAL. Oh, by the way, my 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 analysis there of Tim Kennedy, based on my previous interactions, I don't know if that's reflective of, of, of how he still is. If you're talking about O'Neill, the guy who claimed to kill Osama bin Laden. Um, I remember when that came up, looking into it and being like, yeah, this guy's full of shit. Um, and I don't really care enough to, to remember how he's full of shit. Cause it's just, it's military lies bragging. Uh, you know, I did this for Dakota Myers, uh, met Marine Corps medal of honor winner and, and really dissected his story and Bing Crosby. I think it was the author who co-wrote his autobiography, whatever, uh, story of this. And it turned out to be all bullshit, like proven by military records that his Medal of Honor citation and the story he told the public was totally false. So it's like anytime you look under the hood of this military machismo bragging, toxic masculinity, I'm I'm good because I lick boots and I'm pro war and I wear a uniform and I have rank and I'm part of the bigger gang. Yeah, it's it's yeah. you look under the hood and it's just it's just bullshit. So to the Wall Street Journal. Taliban battle opposition militias wield new power in Kabul. Hundreds of American citizens and residents look for a way out of Afghanistan after U.S. forces depart. Clashes flared in northern and central Afghanistan between the Taliban and local militias on Wednesday as the Islamist movement continued to consolidate its grip on power in the Afghan capital two days after the U.S. ended its 20-year presence in the country. So I don't want to get too much into this story because a lot of this I know is propaganda as well, but that they are, it's worth pointing out that like Scott, again, to reference Scott Horton, the Taliban is not the people's militia of Afghanistan. It is the people's militia of some people of Afghanistan. And there is going to be a power struggle. What I see in this the, the sort of behind the headlines that is that is a, a scary, disturbing thing that I hope doesn't determine the outcome of this is that the U.S. forces still in Afghanistan, the, the CIA, uh, you know, the, the covert forces operating there, the drones, of course, the drone strikes are going to have a role in this, the, the air support from the U.S. military. Uh, but the funding, the covert funding of these competing groups the infiltration to instigate more violence is going to escalate that conflict in Afghanistan. Whereas I think if you had gotten rid of all of that, if you had really had a complete U.S. withdrawal in that sense, and, and there were no other foreign influences, I think the Taliban would have a much easier job. Of, I think pretty obvious. The Taliban would have a much easier job of creating a unified representative government in Afghanistan with these conflicts that might not be possible. Now, before we get to our COVID block, a quick reminder about the competency and the death cult of the U.S. military. NBC News, five missing after Navy helicopter crashes into sea off San Diego. The Coast Guard and the Navy were conducting search and rescue operations after the MH60S crashed. One person has been rescued. It means five missing. Yeah, one out of six. Yeah. The MH-60S helicopter, which was carrying six people, crashed around 60 nautical miles off San Diego at 4.30 p.m. So this is regular training shit, as far as, far as we know. Yes, the fleet said the helicopter was, quote, conducting routine flight operations when it crashed from the USS Abraham Lincoln. And uh, Shane Hazel, another veteran friend of mine, libertarian activist out of Georgia, has recently popularized the term murder cult to describe the military um, and, and that it is a, a cult, you know, it is a group that worships murder, right? That's, that's, you know, very fair, very, very appropriate to point out that that is a fair characterization. Uh, but I think it goes, you know, it might even go further than that because 
what what do they do when someone in the military dies in a training exercise? What do they, what do, they do when someone in the military is they didn't murder anybody, they didn't kill anybody on behalf of the government or commit a war crime in and of itself, right? They're accessory to. Uh, what do you say when, when someone dies in combat? It's celebrated. They're venerated. It is the ultimate sacrifice. You paid the ultimate price. You gave the most you could give to your country. I think it's fair to call it a fucking death cult. All right. Speaking of death cults, to COVIDism. Yeah. Yeah. We're just going to get through a lot of these headlines. I don't know. Jim, Ant, you want to come up here? Did I miss any headlines? Before, before we jump into our we smoke weed every day, bigger COVID vitamins. Feels like it's been an intense show. No guests to break things up. Get back up here, guys. But yeah, it's, it's intense. It's not like good. Wait. One of us is working for the man. I thought Jim was going to get on screen here and smoke with us. So this is, this is, uh, Smoke weed every day when you're no longer working for the man. We had and, we had a we had a company come over, so I had a distraction yeah. going on yeah. right at that perfectly bad timing. So sorry, I couldn't be on I'm trying to get one. my newborn granddaughter high. <laughs> Goddamn child services is here checking on us already because I'm broadcasting with Adam versus the man, and you know it's getting more. Good. Yeah, I knew I knew we had company coming over. And I was thinking in my head, I was like, I know it's going to come over just at the right time where Adam's going to happen. I'm never on video all this time. And it just so happens when companies coming over. Oh, Adam says, Jim, get up on screen and smoke some pot. No, can't do it right now. Sorry. Yeah. That's the reason right, I don't I do our the, producers the show club. at work. Just because... Sorry. Uh, that's the reason I don't, uh, I don't run the show at work around a lot of other people because then I'd be going in for a random every other week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Uh, well, uh, I see in our producers club we got major blow to vaccine effort. Senior FDA leaders stepping down. I've already actually got that story in the links, Mr. Liberty. Check the links before you post during the show. All right. Um, so, Ant, uh, before we get to our COVID block and our grab bag here, did I miss any comments or any angles on uh, on Afghanistan? Or anything we've covered so far? Uh, there was one that I was wanting to bring up, but I might have already lost it. Uh, I was having some connecting issues. Let me see if it's still there. Um, yeah, I, I think I already lost it. I think it's too far back. Do you remember? But, uh, but no, just there's a lot of people that are that have some pretty. Uh, there's just a lot of people have a lot of opinions on on Afghanistan right now. Well, you know what we say about opinions in my connection. Oh yeah, it's opinions are like assholes. It's really fun to put stuff in them. Wait, did I say that out loud? I mean, wait, no, that that was a Marine Corps thing. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, yeah. Okay, so the Navy. Thank you. Well, we are in the Navy, you know, the men's department of the Navy and the Marines. Uh, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. All right, Ant. Ant will be keeping on the comments while we get through this COVID block. One, one, one more. One more. Joy's going to. What? 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 We eat every day. All right, we got Jim in on it that time. And now that we've had our COVID vitamins and COVID is contained in this COVID block, we go to GreenwichTime.com for a story from the Washington Post. They're called mild cases, but people with breakthrough COVID can still feel pretty sick. No shit. And actually, this is a story I kind of missed because they've been getting this narrative out. Oh, well, if you had the vaccine, it at least makes it milder. Right. Andrew Kinsey knew that even after being vaccinated against the coronavirus, there was a chance he could still fall ill with COVID-19. He just never expected to feel this lousy from a case doctors call mild. For nearly a week, Kinsey felt like he had been run over by a truck. He started to walk down a few steps 
and stay awake through episodes of the TV show Doomsday Preppers. You're watching Doomsday Preppers and you're not you haven't figured out that you shouldn't take a fucking vaccine yet? Really? Really? You returned to work last Monday as a corporate litigator but needs midday naps. Wait, you're still sick with COVID and you're going back to work? What lunacy is this? As he said, quote, the vaccine appears to have worked to protect my lungs, so that kept, kept me from having life-threatening symptoms. But at the same time, the so-called mild course can be sort of the sickest I've ever been in my life, said Kinsey, who was 38 and lives with his wife and three children in Pennsylvania. It's important for people to know that what they picture in their head of a bad cold isn't necessarily what will actually happen, even if they get a mild course. So what's the narrative behind this? I mean, they're taking like one story, and there's a lot of these, you know, um, as it says, but with breakthrough cases, limited data and research make it hard to pinpoint what share ends up with significant symptoms and uh, that do not require hospitalization. Uh, so that's the other thing is that a lot of people who have the vaccine and then get sick just aren't reporting anything. They're, oh, I got the vaccine. So oh, well, I did everything I can do. I'll just stay home. Uh, CDC reports 27% of breakthrough cases are asymptomatic, which probably means it could be a lot more than that, right? Again, how do they do this? Who knows? The public health agency stopped collecting widespread data on mild and moderate affections among the fully vaccinated in May, prompting criticism from some experts who say those cases should be monitored even if they are less serious. Now, to the bigger narrative here, why are they getting this out? I think the greater incentive, rather than stay true to the COVIDist narrative of vaccines are good and work and blah, blah, is they, it, it's more that they want to just keep you afraid. There's so many people who profit from the fear of COVID and the hysteria at this point that it, they, they, they're looking for more fear, uncertainty, and doubt. So remember, as we, we see things are shifting now, there is a sort of coming out of the pandemic, even though it's like, oh, no, maybe it's a new normal. It's here forever. But there is a sort of coming out of the initial reactionary phase, at least. There is a coming out of the no one has immunity phase because now we have vaccines and we have enough people who have gotten and gotten better that they have you know natural immunity. Grace says daily COVID vitamins are better than daily COVID naps. Yeah, no shit. Indeed. So. The next fear-mongering headline on COVID from France 24, WHO monitoring new coronavirus variants named Mu. Mu is an M-U. Mur. Get in line for your new vaccine for the Mur variant of COVID. <laughs> CNN. They did that on purpose. Yes. They did that on purpose. <laughs> Somebody did that on purpose. <laughs> Even the evil the powers have a sense of humor. variant <laughs> of the coronavirus. Everybody say <laughs> variant. Uh, CNN.com. Two senior FDA vaccine leaders step down as agency faces decision on boosters. Two senior leaders in the U.S. Food and Drug Administration's Vaccine Review Office are stepping down even as the agency works towards High-profile decisions around COVID-19 vaccine approvals, authorizations for younger children, and booster shots. The retirements of Dr. Marion Gruber, Director of the Office of Vaccines Research and Review at FDA's Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research, and Dr. Philip Krauss, Deputy Director of the Office, were announced in an internal agency email sent on Tuesday and shared with CNN by the FDA. So, yeah, of course, shakeup like this, predictable. Whether something more will come out of it, we shall see, I hope. To Wall Street Journal, in Israel, being fully vaccinated now means three shots. Israeli study finds booster shot of Pfizer vaccine can give tenfold protection against severe illness. going to be a really interesting case study. Uh, they can make excuses and say, oh, well, it's at least, you know, for tenfold. Tenfold. That sounds like, I mean, if you put that on, uh, on, a, on a nutrition label, like you would, you would have to put a big asterisk on it to not, it says, you know, not approved by the FDA statement has not been evaluated by the FDA if you don't want to get sued. But if it's a, a vaccine company and they're, they're touting a virus, they can say whatever they want. Bah variant, Josh Long. Thank you. Um, yeah. And in Israel, they're doing this because they're having more cases. And you go, well, if you have more cases, then vaccines aren't really 
working. Oh, but they're keeping people from dying. Okay. And and part of me wants to talk to everybody who is still, you know, people I know, like in my family, who are COVIDists and uh, COVIDiots, to be like, how much of your narrative has to fall apart before you give it up? You think about people, think about atheists, you know, the enthusiastic atheists who, you know, enthusiastically rejected Christianity. There's still a lot of people who hold on to the mythology of Christianity and to, to those who do it well, the good Christians out there. My my apologies for using Christianity as the example. Here. I know a lot of them. But so, so the, the, there are good Christians, but to the bad, the, 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 the ideological Christians, the doctrinaire Christians who hold on to the mythology in the, in, in, the, in the face of facts and reason and evidence to the contrary, there will always be people who hold on to COVIDism, I think, the same way because it is it is so quickly, you know, they've, they've gone through a, re a religious conversion experience where it's become part of their, their identity. They may hold on to it as long as the authorities are there giving them a church to attend, so to speak. Healthy disrespect, less people dying is because of a weaker virus IRL. Yeah, yeah. So there's that too. Thank actually thank you for pointing that out because this is one of the predictions that that I brought to this early that this virus would follow the normal course of viruses in human evolution, the evolution of the virus itself, that they are going to become more contagious and less deadly. The virus wants to spread and not kill the host. That's the evolution. So uh very interesting dynamics here. Did I finish the point I was on? Oh, about people re enthusiastically rejecting COVIDism. Can we learn from the enthusiastic atheists, agnostics who have rejected doctrinaire Christianity and say, well, what led you to that? And for a lot of them, it's it's one particular thing that they hang up on, right? D. Vincent W. must be horrible to realize that you took the jab and then learn it's detrimental to the continued life you need yeah like in australia you get an hour out once a day like even if you've been vaccinated that's your vaccine privilege now that that much freedom so maybe it's one thing after another uh but i i think in terms of combating covid hysteria uh it might serve us to think of what we're doing as a kind of cult deprogramming we are deprogramming people from the COVIDist cult. The Washington Post, with this interesting headline at MSN.com, a hospital refused to give ivermectin to a COVID patient. Then a judge ordered doctors to administer it. A lot on this story, a lot on, you know, like the, the legal uh, implications and specifics, but just, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this story later and, and, and really learn it because it's an interesting point in, in where we are with COVID and ivermectin and sort of, you know, alternative therapies uh, when basically the medical establishment says, you know, all we can officially give you is uh, a ventilator and vaccines and then symptomatic treatment when we know there are other treatments that are more effective that are being suppressed. And, and ivermectin is just one of them. This is where I, I don't pretend to be an expert. I haven't kept up on this. If you're getting COVID and you're concerned that it might be bad, yes, you should take it seriously and look into that and decide for yourself what treatment is best for you in your situation with what's available. All I can say from here is that it's fucking sick that we don't have an open, honest conversation about what works and what doesn't. and We don't give Americans the ability to choose for themselves. And so when I see that choice being taken away from people or a massive propaganda effort, it, it again, it, reminiscent of, oh, no, don't don't smoke cannabis. You should take antidepressants. Yeah, I'm going to look into that. I'm not, no. And it's the same people. Definitely not going to trust them. And finally, uh, actually, no, this isn't wrapping up our COVID block. We got more COVID stories. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're not out of COVID yet. NME.com. Joey shared this one in the Producers Club. Corey Taylor. Corey Taylor. Yeah, that Corey Taylor thinks he contracted COVID-19 from a selfish audience member at one of his shows. Yes. You um, crying baby. We need, we need a soundboard, man. We really need a soundboard. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Corey Taylor of Slipknot. Big heavy metal grunge. What would you call it? Heavy metal. Just heavy metal. I think they had a more of a slightly 
on the grunge radio. just mainstream element too. They're, they're okay, the so, so that's why I would have that impression. Element, but okay, but, yeah, but they're metal. They're a metal band. Pretty brutal metal, yeah. It's uh, and you would think that someone like this and Slipknot is not a fly by night one hit wonder. Slipknot is a staple of the metal community, right, or the metal genre and and it, mainstream music. Anything, anything about Foo Fighters, the Pussy Rock. Yes, well, now we have pussy metal. Yeah, and, man. This is the and pussy it's like metal. offspring, like lyrically, Slipknot's very, oh, liberate yourself. And it's like, wait a minute, what is this shit right yeah. now? I, mm. Yeah, so yeah, healthy disrespect for authority. Scratches Slipknot off the list of bands that you ever want to support again at I all. Know, it's terrible. Because this guy not only is, because it's one thing to buy into the, the, the COVIDist narrative, to because I must admit for a brief time there, I fell for it too, you know, um, but to turn to the attitude of bullying anybody that doesn't go along, of blaming, of, of this denial, this is shameless. So here's the quote. You try to trust that people are vaccinated or they're masking up in social distancing and at least testing negative before they go to something like that. It the is singer who is vaccinated reveals he had tested positive for COVID-19 earlier this month following a run of headline shows in support of his debut solo album. He shared the news in a video message for the Michigan Pop Culture Festival Astronomicon, which he had been scheduled to appear at prior to his diagnosis. And I'm like, just turn this around on yourself for a second, dude. Holy shit. You got COVID going to shows and you want to blame unvaccinated people for important, being irresponsible? Important to note, and I don't know if it's in that article, he got COVID really? after he got his vaccine. Oh, that too. Of course, no, of so, course, yeah. Of course. So for him saying people are selfish for not, you should get vaccinated for coming to my show. Look how it didn't work for me. You, yeah. It should also not work for you. Like and, this, and this was but I'm going to blame you because I'm the, the guy on stage. This was, I don't know if you remember me looking at shows a couple months ago and I said, oh, Slipknot's coming. And I said, never mind. Because that was the, the, the concert they were doing, the pods. They were selling pods. And you had to stay yeah. in a little social distance pod. Thought it was the venue. Pretty sure it was their request now. So here's the thing that's so sick about this, though. Here's another quote from Taylor. Sometimes you just run into those selfish people that don't care about that. I think that's what happened to me. Someone came to one of my shows and was in the audience sick and probably got several people sick. Man. And then what did you do? You kept going to shows and got more people sick before you had symptoms and tested. I don't know, maybe you're, he's, they've probably got, but the thing is, when they, if they test these people like over and over again, like touring performers, they're going to get a lot of false positives. I mean, it would be crazy if like he has no symptoms, he's all false positives, it's all bullshit. But like what this, what this reveals is uh, that Corey Taylor is a kind of sick, dangerous individual who shouldn't be financially supported, that his message is bad for people psychologically it's unhealthy like someone who is projecting this insecurity and this kind of bullying attitude should not be supported at all so i, I hope someone clips out this segment and starts spamming Corey taylor trying to promote his debut solo album with this because he deserves to be called out this is this is a market correction and uh, there are a lot of people like this who hide behind rebellious sounding lyrics and they suck people in. And what's so sick is that Corey Taylor is not only a government profiteer specifically because this is all through intellectual property and corporatist policy that allows the mainstream music industry of the modern age to be what it is where this asshole gets to make a lot of money selling out America's legitimate rebellious spirit because people who come to, to the mainstream media music industry excuse me, the mainstream music industry with actual rebellious messages who back that up. And I've seen this. They I've get, seen this with they friends. Get booted. They get booted. They get booted. But a lot of them keep a strong following underground and don't stop. But they, they never make money again. But then they you don't get to be Corey Taylor. They don't, they don't get that. You don't get to be the one with right. the money, with the platform, with the deb debut solo album tour to spread your nonsense, your insecurity, your lies, and your bullying. So, oh, so fuck Corey Taylor. Tattoo, 
Oh, so you almost got I, a yeah, lot of people got in, slipknot tattoos they got to cover January, up. January, right? I was going to get a bar of music notes behind my ear of a slipknot song that like really inspires me. Yeah. Glad they didn't have an appointment. Really, yeah. Just so, I, I mean, I enjoy a lot of mainstream music that's got, you know, a rebellious message, but not in any kind of modern, you know, big artist way. And I definitely don't support them financially. I mean, someone's going to say, well, Adam, you're a Pandora subscription. I used to. But um, like, like, you got to look at who you're supporting. This is conscientious consumerism. And, uh, you, you know, you don't you don't give in to bullies. You stand up to them. You definitely don't buy their albums. You definitely don't support them. And I think for uh, Corey Taylor and Slipknot fans, uh, to stand up to him and this bullshit and say, fuck you for being authoritarian. Fuck you for being a bully. Fuck you for being a sellout. And, you know, I hate to say this, but there are a lot more people like him, uh, Foo Fighters, Offspring, who, who are revealing themselves to be the tools of, of the authorities that they always have been. And uh, it's, it's all the more important now that we take this as a teachable moment to evolve culturally and be more conscientious in our consumption of music and arts and culture. Dailymail.com. If you're unvaccinated, don't travel over Labor Day weekend. CDC asks 80 million unvaccinated Americans to stay home this weekend as COVID cases rise to 160,000 a day. Is anybody still listening to the CDC in America? No, but that's where they're getting you to, they're, they're trying to scare you. Uh, that's what they're trying to scare you with now or scare you into, into, into staying home. WSJ Wall Street Journal, social security, economic implications of COVID. Always got to cover this. Social security costs expected to exceed total income in 2021 as COVID-19 takes financial toll. Trustees say hit from pandemic was less than feared. Trust fund is now expected to be depleted in 2034 unless Congress shores up program. It's the lockbox. We've got all the money you gave us in a lockbox. And it'll be there for you when you get old. And you'll that's, that, that's a bad Al Gore impersonation. Remember Al Gore in the debates when he was running for president? So social security lockbox. Anyway, very bad impersonation. Don't 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 clip that part. Uh, but yeah, I, I wonder if I mean, we're, we're seeing a lot of economic deteriorate deterioration. Uh, Joey and I like to refer to this as Babylon crumbling because we see it in our daily lives. We see like stores i mean, just I, again i have, this is where i get to be honest I, I eat fast food probably like at least two or three times a week yeah i mean just go to town convenient maybe, meal maybe i try to be more. conscious i get out by the way no sodas with corn syrup that's one line i draw in getting fast food uh, and no meat and no meat i'm still i'm when it comes to me getting fast food strict vegetarian 100 percent um not vegan that's not really realistic but you can go strict vegetarian it, 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 you know, and eat fast food. We see fast food restaurants with signs like we're out of this, we're out of this, where our hours are limited because we can't hire people. Uh, customer support. You think about even just basic shit when everybody is more stressed out, everybody is more burdened. There are less people trying to keep up, keep stores open than ever before. Uh, they're going to be cracks. And again, I, I, I say this as a reminder to people to be empathetic to people who are that front for corporate America, they don't be an asshole to the guy who is legitimately like just doing his job, pumping gas or you know, working the counter at Walmart uh, or waiting tables at a restaurant or uh, putting food out the window at, at, a, at a drive through. Be nice to those people because it's getting shitty for them, too, right now. And they're not guilty of anything uh, as by virtue of that, at least. <laughs> but. I wonder now to this headline if there's a critical tipping point where income falls below benefits as a dominant driver of economic forces. And I, I th these are two continuums coming to, you know, like there's an, inf there's an inflection point. I'm, I'm doing really dumb things with my hands trying to make, it can make them look like lines on a graph intersecting, right? But there's a, there's, there's an inflection point. There's an intersection where income falls below certain economic measures of welfare that government is, is, is put in people's hands. And I, I don't know that that is a tipping point, but uh, it, my understanding of economics would suggest that if this trend continues, we are gonna hit certain tipping points where 
Babylon is going to crumble in bigger chunks faster and faster. And you're going to have to watch. They don't start falling on your head. Ant, weighing in here from the co-host chair. We're going to have you on screen in just a minute. I canceled my show in Daytona after mandatory COVID vax announced for the other shows. And then NIN Nine Inch Nails dropped the event after they announced that Slipknot is their replacement. <laughs> so are, is, are, are you saying Nine Inch We'll come back. Nine Inch Nails is, is, is doing the right thing. And Slipknot is being the sellouts. That's That's good. That's, nice. That makes sense. Nice. Trent Reznor for the win. Thanks, Trent. Uh, yeah, Axios.com. Homeschooling. Positive story. Homeschooling reaches critical mass. Are we at a homeschooling tipping point? The number of U.S. kids who are homeschooled is nearly doubled during the pandemic. Why it matters. Some parents have lost faith in traditional schools. Others fear exposing their kids to the coronavirus and the broad exodus could further weaken America's struggling public education system. Horrible misnomer. I'm going to give you this one because it's not a public education system. It's the government education system. By the numbers, nearly 2.6 million kids have switched from traditional school to homeschooling since the pandemic began. That's huge. Now the total is about 5 million. That's doubling the number of kids homeschooled in America since the pandemic began. This is not in a shutdown situation. This is switched to homeschooling doubled from about two and a half million to about five million rounding those numbers for you to get a grasp on this 330 million americans a lot less of them are children and of those children went from two and a half million to about five million homeschooled for the last two years that's amazing that's more than 11 percent of u.s households now homeschooling and it's not just white families who are moving to homeschooling. 9.7% of white families with kids have pulled out of traditional education. 12.1% Hispanic, 88 Asian. And here's, this is to me, and I, and I hate to be collectivist because I know this is like based on racist thoughts of my own. I'm admitting to here, but 16.1% of black families. If I look at the experience of black America, and I will collectivize black America this way based on my understanding of the mythology. And I go, how the hell are you not more libertarian after having had that experience with government? And then you see who's refusing the vaccines most right now? Black Americans. Because they remember Tuskegee. Because in the age of the internet, they can remind each other of all the horrific shit the American medical establishment has done to black Americans. And now I see that reflected in how many are, are homeschooling. Fucking awesome. Go black America. Yeah. Uh, I know that's a sort of collective, maybe it's not racist because it's not derogatory, but it is, it is a collectivist race, race, race based thought of mine. I admit to, but I, I, it makes me go, yeah, black America, major, major accomplishments here, uh, from a libertarian perspective. I'm not just some status blowing smoke up your ass for being more accomplished in my standards of obedience. No, this is, this is awesome. All right. So, and get back up here. We have just enough time. We're going to have a fun grab bag for tomorrow couple stories piled up from yesterday and today, but we got just enough time to go over this story you shared from ABC 13. Texas laws now in effect, including permitless carry. And, yeah, so, and by the way, did I first, did I get that thing right about Nine Inch Nails and, and Trent Reznor versus yes, yeah, Corey it, Taylor? It, it, and Trent, Trent, didn't, Trent didn't announce that it was because of that, but they announced it on all the other events that they're going to have uh, vaccine mandates in order to get into the show. Uh, they haven't announced it in Florida yet, uh, but every other event that's run by that company that runs these music festivals has announced that show. Florida has an anti-mask mandate rule or anti-vax mandate rule, so they haven't announced it yet. But Trent Reznor dropped immediately after they announced it at all the other shows, and then two days later, uh, Slipknot came up and said, oh, yeah, we'll do it, which is funny to me that he's bitching about his fans giving him COVID. But, yeah, so you, know, you got is, that right. This is the exact problem I was describing earlier is that the sheeple now will be listening to Slipknot thinking this is the height of rebellious music and the smart kids will be at home listening to Nine Inch Nails going like, nah, this shit's legit. This is, and, and you know what? I, I am, I'm an old school fan of Nine Inch Nails and so this warms my heart. I don't know enough to, 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 to praise Trent for being libertarian or, or righteous and everything else, but right now to Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails for doing the right thing, standing up to the COVID yeah, they, 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 they don't need the money, money right? They, that. that band's wealthy enough. They don't need the money, so that band's basically like, you know what? Fuck it. We don't need the money anyways. Yeah. We're not gonna. We're not gonna play political games. 
That's the yeah, way it looked like. They did it the statement. They yeah, yeah. For it. Trent Reznor, yeah. Well, Nobody I understand. The first, the first thing they do is, hey, we're, let's withdraw from the shows and see what happens. Anyway, to Texas, permitless carry is happening now. So right, any that's, Texan that's... over age 21 with a clean record can carry handguns without a license or training. Right. So that's one of the good news is we have we have a few good news from Texas. One of them being that house bill uh, that does the permitless carry. Uh, we also have uh, medical marijuana becoming a thing. Yeah, by, now. by the way, hey, I'm going to interrupt because it's a, we're 30 seconds. Let's go two minutes long and cover these real quick because this is an interesting little we got we got Ant join us from Texas. I know we got a lot of listeners in Texas, um, but as an evolution of statism, I think all of these deserve at least uh, a, a quick coverage as individual points. So, uh, permitless carry. Yeah, uh, that's one of the good news is. Uh, ex yeah, expanding medical marijuana program is going to be a good thing. Um, it says it can be seen in a variety of ways. Blah blah blah. Uh, it's expanded to cancer patients and to uh, veterans uh, with PTSD. Uh, currently, there's yep. about 6,000 people in Texas that are licensed for medical marijuana, which is not really a well-known thing. And um, with this new bill, it could up to 114,000 yeah. people could be eligible yeah. for it. So that's a good step in the right direction. Well, um, yeah, this in, in the bigger context, this takes Texas from one of those states that's like technically medical, but essentially bullshit to potentially having at least a functional, reasonably accessible medical program, which means defanging the drug war across Texas and, and, and the police state in a lot of ways. That's a big positive. I'm excited for that. Still, I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical because they're going to roll it out as slowly as they can. But if it's, if, if, if it's veterans can smoke pot now you, in Texas, you better not fucking stand in our way. Yeah, um, they also uh, had a long-standing bill that prevents you from buying alcohol uh, after two o'clock on Saturday and before noon on Sunday. They repealed that, and now you can buy booze at ten o'clock on Sunday. So I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but I mean, it's kind of interesting. Um, uh, another really interesting point that they brought up is uh, Te Texans love their freedom, but not before ten a.m. Man, I mean, right, get right. Like you yeah, can't well, some county, there's still some counties in Texas that were dry counties. You weren't even allowed to buy alcohol in some counties <laughs> in Texas. So um, the the other one that I really like uh, that we really did is uh, Senate Bill 2 uh, that relates to the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, or ERCOT. And it's uh, purpose is to reform the board, requiring the council's chairman and board of directors to live in Texas. So when we had our our, our some winter storm and all the power went out right. all the board of directors didn't even live in texas they didn't care if texas had power they didn't care that they could up the production and didn't have to shut down generators to kill power so now according to this new bill they have to they live in texas move. they're gonna move to texas and be in mansions with backup generators like really right uh, yeah, yeah predictable but it also requires the chairman to be selected by the governor and uh, who would then be required by the texas senate confirmation and all changes to ERCOT protocols would need to be presented to the public utility commission of texas before adoption so it it puts more government control in that power grid but at the same time these people a lot of these people are elected officials that are actually yeah. able to help so i mean that it kind of puts it in the hands of the people a little bit more i think on that but the problem is we have these really three good news coming from texas and then we have the abortion restrictions so oh, now we've what made you think of that what is that oh man so now we've made a now we've we've we're giving them we're giving we're giving everybody some rights right so rights privileges back but let's go ahead and take some back because we can't give you something without taking something back so the abortion restrictions the provisions of senate bill 8 which was signed into law by governor abbott on may 19th ban abortions after an ultrasound can detect what lawmakers defined as a fetal heartbeat so uh, currently it's it's really hard to get an abortion in texas anyways this just makes it that much harder and yeah. you know it goes on to more stipulations on 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 how that's played but with that I, also you know, comes, it sounds it sounds good like even for me as a as a libertarian who is both both pro-life and pro-choice and anti-abortion and wants government to be out of it entirely go well if there's a heartbeat maybe and you go no it's government intervention and sometimes the heartbeat is as early as six weeks and all it's doing is making this incredible burden for women who for medical reasons even i would say should have an abortion right and with that also comes uh an 
another bill that they're calling a trigger law. And this trigger law basically says the United States Supreme Court overturns a 73 landmark Roe versus Wade case uh, that abortions become completely illegal immediately 30 days after that it's, it's overturned. So it's, it's already a trigger. It's waiting for that to happen to a confession. Like it's already in place. They don't have to go vote on it. It's already there. If Roe versus well, Wade goes, it becomes immediately illegal. Yeah. So, yeah. This is, it's not going to happen. That's not relevant, but, but it's that that's political pandering no, and, yeah. and tech. But here's, here's, you, you missed part of the abortion uh, amendment that I think is really important here. You didn't, you didn't mention this. Anyone who aids or abets an abortion when prohibited under state law could also be sued. That includes insurance companies or even someone who drives the the person to the clinic. Wow. That is some invasive police state shit that in Texas, they they really use abortion as a a wedge issue excuse to cut in on. But there's there's one other thing here. And just to, to wrap up this segment that I think is interesting. There is in Texas now coming into effect the Star Spangled Banner Protection Act. Yes. Under Senate Bill 4, professional sports teams that receive government fun- funds from the state of Texas will be required to play the song. If you do not play our special religious anthem to oh, worship man. the state and make us feel better about licking the boots of the federal government, we will take your money away. You will play our special song and make us feel good or else. Yeah, that's Texas because you yeah, love freedom. Right. So we're much, so right? free that we're going to force you for our anthem, right? And the only yeah. other big, the big thing that comes into play today is House Bill 3979, which uh, Texas becomes one of uh, a few states that have passed the ban on critical race theory teaching in schools. So I'm not going to get into all that part. You guys can go check that Wait link. Wait a on second. The- Wait a second. Isn't isn't that some like Taliban Nazi dictator shit controlling what you can and can't teach in schools? Imagine Banning that, different right? ideologies, censoring them. Hmm. Hmm. Now, I know it's more limited than that. We're talking government schools policy. It's not, but again, it's just the, if you looked at it from from the, the the way that the Taliban could spin this to say how much America hates freedom, yeah, yeah, Texas really hates their freedom, don't they? Yeah. So, so we get we <laughs> they gave us a few rights, but then we gave you this, so we have to take all of this other stuff back from you. Yeah. So and that, you have to play that's the really, song. That really shows you the difference between a libertarian and and what a Republican is. And a Republican, they don't believe in freedom. They believe in giving you just enough freedom so you think that you're free. Yep. All right. Just enough rope to hang yourself. Jim, thank you very much, Ant. Give us the producer notes. What's going on? I hope you enjoyed the show, everybody. I just like to start these ending promos by saying, fuck Texas, man. All that bullshit. They got a few... Just really quick, I know we're already over time, but the very first one we talked about was permitless carry, and then it gave you a list of criteria that you have to meet to to be able to gain that permit. So what the fuck is permitless about it? You still got to meet criteria to be permitted. So fuck Texas altogether. I'm never going there. I'm going to drive around that bitch when I go back home. Anyways, t.me forward slash Adam versus the man is where you can go to check out all the links, even the ones we didn't get to cover today. Patreon.com forward slash Adam versus the man financially sports show. Instagram at the Garden of Freedom. See all your pictures and videos of life up in Gardenia. Homefrontbattlebuddies.com, the crypto6.com, and gogreenenergyonline.com. Click all those websites in that order. Read all the all the words on those websites twice because reading is good for you. Love you all. Have a good day. And congratulations to Uzbekistan, who today is celebrating 30 years of independence, having, according to Good News Network, on this day in history in 1991, declared independence from the Soviet Union. And if they can do it, you can too. And with that, peace and love, y'all. Choose happiness and be excellent to each other.